Hello. Hello. You should be good to go and take the screen. Okie doke. If uh, Edge will decide to launch. Alrighty, how many do we got? Well, there's always the recording. Is everybody able to see my screen and also hear me? Okay, then. Cool. Let's see. <clears throat> Today is going to be a lab where um, most of the things that need to be done are going to be questions that need to be answered and English rather than code. So everything up and to those questions is going to get us the information we need to answer them. And what are we uh, trying to get towards? Towards the idea of hypothesis testing. What is hypothesis testing? Well, in a general sense, it's the idea that you can have a hypothesis, so something a claim that is testable, be true or false. And you want to be able to accept it or reject it with a certain level of confidence. So that's what we're going to try to get to. All right, in our case, we have some data from a database. It looks like this. It's in the CSV. So that's downloaded here from our requests that we've been doing. And we'll make a data frame out of it. Call that data frame uh, my data. And it looks like this. Looks like there's 100 rows, a bunch of floats, a bunch of floats. All right, so question one What are the names of the two series in the data frame? Well, you can see right here. These are the names of the columns. And remember that in a data frame, the columns are of type series. Data frame is its own type. So how would it be able to check this? Pretty simple. I can print the type of my data. Uh, oops, I need to rerun everything, don't I? There we go. All right, so we see that it's a data frame comes from pandas. Now, what is the type of a column in my data frame? Well, I can get a column like this. And as you see, it is a series. So what are the names of the two series in our data frame? Well, they're listed right here. Question two, describe the two data series, which has larger mean value and which has larger variance. OK, so this is going to be um, up to you guys. Somebody describe the two data series. Uh -huh. 
So in English, somebody describe our data series. That's the idea. They both have a 100 count. Yes, they do. What else? What kind of things do they hold? Are they uh, full of characters? Integers? Yeah. I would consider they are a series of length 100 of floating point numbers. Be good enough. All right, which has the larger mean value? Set one or set two? Set two. Okay, how do you know that? How do you know that set two has a larger mean value than set one? Uh, you read both numbers from those numbers that are larger. Uh, that would be. Um, if that were the case, that would be true. But how do you know that set two has higher numbers than set one? You you can see it on the screen here. Uh, these numbers are in the hundreds, 500, 480. But what about uh, line five? In set one, we have 6,000. And in set two, we have three, the number, the number three. And then for line six, we have 712 and 32. And then in line seven, we have uh, similar. We only see about 10 rows here. So how can you make the claim that the uh, mean for one is greater than the other? Well, let's, let's go one step further. What is the mean of set two? Is there a method that would, in one fell swoop, give me the mean of both of them and the variance of, well, the standard deviation of both of them? I usually wouldn't ask that question if there weren't one. Yeah, the describe method. So what does the describe method uh, work with? Well, it actually works with any of these things, either the individual ones, or I can say on the data frame. So in for set one, we see there's 100 of them. And right here, we have the mean. So 48 is less than 508. That is for sure. What about the variance? Which one is a larger variance? Set two is a larger variance. Okay, what tells you that? Uh, yeah, the relationship between standard deviation and variance is one's the square of the other. So if the standard deviation is larger, that means that the uh, variance will be larger as well. So there you go. That's everything for question two. All right. Now let's visualize our data series here. So set one is our first series, and set two is our second series, and we're going to make a histogram. What's a histogram? Well, it's a lot like a bar plot, except you've got some buckets, and you want to throw your data into it. It's not very useful if we only have two bins. Let's try adding some more. We're getting somewhere. We can see that the 
set one uh, has more in one bucket than set two does. It's another. All right, we're starting to see a pattern here. 40. OK. Well, we can definitely see some similarities and some differences for set one and set two from this histogram. So that leads us into question three. Are the two data set data series similar or not? So that's the question. What would you guys say? Are the data series similar? Their distribution is very different. Hmm. So I would say that uh, one is more spread out than the other. What would cause that? Why would set one have data spread out over a, a smaller area than set two? As you can see, set one has most of its stuff in like four buckets. Whereas set two has them all over the place. What is causing that? Yeah, it's the variance, or the standard deviation. The fact that set two has a larger uh, standard deviation will, and thus a larger variance, will uh, account for the fact that it's more spread out. And the reason that is, if we think oh, it's not very good. If we think back to what we've seen before, the variance is how much outward data is. So if most of the data is concentrated in one spot, like this one, this would indicate it has a lower variance. And that's exactly what we see. OK. So that would be question three. Moving right along. What we're going to do next is we're going to abuse the fact that these are both normal distributions. How do I know they're both normal distributions? Well, it would be difficult for me to actually give you the whole explanation behind the theory. Um, two things uh, is the short answer. If your data looks kind of like this, it's probably going to be normal. As long as it doesn't look really skewed to one side, or it doesn't have more than one collection of data, or it doesn't look like something like this, probably normal. Uh, I didn't actually give the answer to question three, um, and I'm not going to write them in. It's just a mistake that I left this one here for question one. Uh, but question three, uh, we're describing how the series are different. And they're different in how spread out they are. And what causes that is what I mentioned before. So using that, you can put together whatever answer you think is appropriate. But um, right, so we're going to abuse the fact that these are both um, normal. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I have a normal distribution here. I want to recreate the data I collected, but I'm going to make it a, I'm going to make a random version of it. So like I have all my data, you know, with like the actual values I've put together. And so this data has a variance and this data has a mean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two things and not look at any of the actual data. And I'm going to make an entirely new collection of data of the same size, but using the standard deviation and the variance or and the uh, and the mean that was up here. And we're going to randomly make some new numbers. 
And what we will see, well, we'll see what we see. So let's do that. I'm going to get, so all of this works. It only works because we know that these two distributions are normal. Okay, so I didn't give the, I gave the first explanation of how we know it's normal. It's because it looks like a bell curve. The second thing is when you go out and you collect data in the physical world, meaning you go up to people and ask them something and it's a numerical and you write it down, blah, blah, blah. It's almost always going to be, well, I, more likely than not, it is going to be uh, normal. That's the reason it's called normal, the normal distribution. I think it's called the Gaussian distribution, uh, but it's also known as the normal distribution. Um, it is very common in all kinds of data that you'll be out collecting. So with that in mind and the fact that this code was written for it to be the normal, so there's also that. Um, that's how we can use this. We're going to randomly generate a normal set of data. And what are we going to use? Well, we need a mean and a distribution. That's the only way this function works. Um, what's the, the mean? Well, I want to get the mean from my existing data. So I want the mean from set one. And I want the standard deviation from set one. And I want to make 100 of them. So I'm going to make a collection of data of length 100 from the same normal distribution using the same mean and standard deviation, but I want them to be random. I want random numbers from it. Okay. And I want to do the same thing for set two. So what I'm doing here is I have my existing distribution. This is my actual data. It looks kind of like this. Well, let's take this as set two because I don't want to draw a skinny one. So this has a mean, and it has a variance. These are real numbers, in both sense of the word, and we can use them. Now what we're going to do is say, all right, now that I have the standard deviation and the um, mean, throw away the actual data and recreate randomly a new distribution using the standard deviation and the variance. Now, in order for that to happen, we're going to get another set of data that's probably going to look pretty similar to the one we already have. Why is that? Because the mean and the standard deviation, they tell us a lot. So if I don't change the mean or the standard deviation, it's probably going to be pretty similar. So let's take a look. So I take my two um, collections of data. I'm going to put them into a new data frame. I'm going to call it my data underscore D, D meaning derived. And we're going to make a histogram of these two things. Looks pretty similar, right? At least reminiscent of what we were looking at before. Set one is, is skinny, and most of it's in just like three or four buckets. Set two is more spread out. Now, just to show you that the uh, set two and set one S, they are randomly made. And how do I know this? Well, I'll just make them again. And as you can see, the pattern is the same, but they're not actually identical. And I can do I can do this as many times as I want. So I've made taking the the mean and the standard deviation of my actual data. I've made uh, I've derived uh, two more series from just using those two numbers. Question: Are the two new data series similar or not? So this is asking, are these two new data series similar to each other? So is set one S and set two S similar? That is the question. What do you all think? Are they similar? Are they different? They're different from each other. Well, yes, that's exactly correct. Had you said why they're different, I would have said additionally, because of the same reasons we have here. So for the same reasons we have here, these are going to have the same relationship. Set one and set two, set one S, set two S. Uh, this just goes to show you 
we call the mean and the standard deviation, they are measures of central tendency. They would call them that for a reason. If we don't change them and we randomize the numbers that would generate something like this, you're going to get something similar. OK, so let's look at all four of them together. We can do that. Now, uh, this one that has been ran was with the original one I just ran a couple minutes ago. And just to show you um, how similar they are to each other, this is going to be using the latest version of the data. I'll go ahead and run it again. And as you can see, it's the same. You may not be able to tell much of a difference unless you're looking really closely. And that's because of what I was talking about. If I fix the mean and the standard deviation, every time I randomize it, it's going to be random, but it's still going to have a pattern to it. So, oh yeah, this was for something else. Um, now, question five. Are the series set one? which is in green, and set two, which is, I'm sorry, set one S, which is in blue, the same or different? So the dark green is the overlap between the two. The light green is set one, and the blue is set one S. So would you say that they are the same or different? Same question. Yeah, they're barely different. Um, so I would say if I had to pick one same or different, uh, I would say they're the same. How do they compare? They're, I would, I mean, they're the same distribution, uh, plus or minus some differences in the uh, in the buckets in the bins, I guess. Same question for set two and set two s. Would you say set one, set two, and set two s are more similar or different? Yeah, I would say the same. And we all know the reason for that, because I fixed the mean and the standard deviation to come from the original data. So if I don't change these things, the data we get out of it is going to be pr pretty close. OK. Another thing we can look at is the box plots. Remember, these plot the five pieces of data that we are sometimes interested in. And again, this is the. If I run it again, you'll see that these will change a little bit, but not very much. Um, these show the quartiles and the mean and the range, all kinds of neat stuff. So as you can see, set one and set one S, they're pretty close. They look pretty close to each other. Set two and set two S, they look close. Not as close as set one and set one S. Why might that be? Why would set Every time I randomize these, set 2s is going to be more different than set 2, and set 1s is going to be from set 1. Why would that be? So I've got clones of set 1 and set 2. Set 1's clone is going to be more similar to it than set 2's clone is going to be similar to it even though they're both going to be similar. So why is it that set two's clone is less similar than set one's? Set two have, yes, it's, it's because the more standard deviation I have, the more variance I have, the more variance I have. There's a reason that word is chosen. The more the data could just vary. If I make the, if I make the variance huge, so if I have, um, you'll notice that the less the variance is, the more skinny it looks. So every time I clone it, it's going to be pretty close. If I have a, a data selection that looks like this, where the, the variance is just absurdly huge, it's going to be more quote unquote random. Um, what was your last question? What's going on? Those. Oh, I think he's talking to someone else. OK, so that brings getting an error. Yes, you will get an error message. Maybe it is here. 
Let me think. Uh, yeah, it will be here. And the reason for that is uh, this actually doesn't work until you put the, this code in there. And that's because set one is being used as a variable, even though it doesn't exist. Now, this is just something I made. It's You can do it two ways. You can either take this and replace set one with it, and this, and replace set two with it. Or you can make these two lines, whichever you want to do. So that takes us to the next question. Interpret the results of the box plot. Are the set two collections different from the set one collections? And we just discussed this at length. Um, I asked why set one and its clone are more similar than set two and its clone. So an acceptable answer here would be, uh, yes, they're similar. They're, both collections are similar. First one's more similar than the second, and why? Any questions on the questions? As funny as that sounds. I wonder if we're going to get storms here. Texas has tornadoes today. Very fun. Well, I suppose I, not that I shouldn't be sarcastic. It's that it's not always the best tool. Could I explain six again, please? Sure. Question six is asking you to interpret the results of the box plot. Now, what are the results? Well, the results are set one and its clone are very close to each other, and set two and its clone are close to each other. However, the first clone is clonier than the second clone. And why would that be? It's what we talked about before. Um, I believe... Carson's the one who pointed it out. And there's a reason I'm not saying it. Yes, that is correct. I want to uh, reward the people paying attention. And if you want to rewatch the video, that's fine too. But yes, that is correct. So because of that fact, if I were to regenerate the data, just like this, and rerun this, I don't think I need to do that, but as you can see, again, set one and set one S, they're a little different, but they're pretty close. They're really close. Set two and set two S, while they are close, if you had to pick a pair that were closer to each other, you'd obviously go with set one and set one S. And I can do this all day. It is because of what you pointed out. Okay, question seven. Suppose we're comparing the arithmetic means of the four collections. Are the mean values of set one and set two far apart? How many set one standard deviations is set one mean value from set two? What about the converse? OK, so suppose we're comparing the arithmetic means. What on this thingy here is the indicates the arithmetic mean? Doubling up on a caffeine. I've got Diet Coke and coffee. Yeah, that's the orange line. Okay, so what's the difference between the variance? I'm sorry, the uh, the I'm just gonna say the mean. What's the difference between the mean in set one and the mean in set one s? So I'll ask again, set one, set one S, what's the difference in their arithmetic mean? Maybe 10? It seems like there is no difference. I can give you an exact answer. I know exactly how different they are, and you should too. Um, how did we make set one S? You are correct in that they are not very different. In fact, they are the notest very different, the least different you can possibly get. 
How did we generate our set one S? We took a uh, random normal distribution, and what did we use as the mean? Yes, it is set one's mean exactly. So these have the same mean and the same standard deviation. We're not comparing standard deviation right now. Uh, it, the standard deviation was the reason they're kind of different, but we're comparing the means. So set one and set one S have the same mean. Cool. Um, now, let's compare the mean for set one and set two. Now, we can just talk all day about how different they are, but uh, what are their actual values? Does anybody remember where in our, our lab we pointed those out? Uh, okay, yeah, that's more specific than I was expecting. But yeah, when I used the describe function, I pointed them out. And that's why you saw like an extra line here. Because I'm, I'm, so the question is, are they, there's, there's a couple questions. Are they far apart? Uh, the next one is how many S1 from S1 to S2? And this one is how many S2 from S1 to S2? So are they far apart? This one, I don't know, I'll ask you guys. Actually, here's what I'll do. Think about this one while we do the rest. Um, so what's the standard? I'm sorry, not standard deviation. The mean of uh, the first one? Well, it, it actually doesn't matter the order we do this in because we're just talking about the difference, but I'm just, I'm going to take 508. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can do, I can do this. At least I think I can. Um, so below I made a variable for these. So this wouldn't work if you did it in order as they appear, but I believe I made a, yeah, I did. I made a variable for this. Variables are nice. So what's what's nice about what we're going to do here? I'm going to take the mean, and I'm going to subtract the mean from set one. OK, so the difference between the two is about 460. Now, the this question is, how many standard deviations of set, uh, set one does it take to get to bridge the gap? Now, how would we figure that out? Well, we simply divide it. If you've got, if you want to ask, that, that is what division is. It's asking in this range, how many um, iterations of your length does it take to get through it? So we're going to take the set one uh, standard deviation, and we're going to divide this. I don't think I need the parentheses, but I do if I want to do that. OK. So uh, let's see, it isn't wrong here. Ah, yes, I need the parentheses here. Yes. OK, so it'll take me. It will take me about uh, 29 times to get from set one's mean to set two's mean using the standard deviation. Now, if I want to do it the other way, we simply swap the numbers. And uh, well, I, I suppose I didn't need to swap them here, but it doesn't really matter. Why does it not matter? Because it's the same distance either way. We're essentially looking at the absolute value without actually doing it. So it takes me nine and a half times to get from one to the other using a standard deviation of set two. And it takes me about 29 times to get there from set one using set one. OK, so let's get back to the question. Are they far apart? Is 48 and 508 far apart?
Uh, by like 28 times apart. So, so Robert has a good answer. And I believe what Chris is getting at is the best answer, which is it depends. Are they far apart? I don't know. Far apart's a relative term. Are 50, this is 50-ish. We'll call this 50 and 500, just to make things simpler. Uh, are 50 and 500 far apart compared to 50 and 5 billion? Not really. Are they far apart compared to 1 and 5? Yeah. So it could go either way. But what I'll say is, because the magnitude of the things we're looking at, one's on the 50 range, one's on the 500 range. So in terms of 500, the difference between this and this is 450. That's a significant portion of the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah. I would, I would argue that yes, they are. And here's a visualization of that. Is the gap between the two of these larger than the two things themselves? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's question seven. All right, question eight. Here is the wiki on Six Sigma. Now, what is going on here is really trying to answer the question of what does it mean to be statistically significant or statistically significantly different? Uh, and so, uh, da, 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 da. I don't think I did. Maybe I did this one. Yeah, it was. So the question is, set one and set two, are they far enough apart to consider them to be statistically different? Well, it's it would be very, I'm not going to go through this whole article. Um, but what I will do is say the term statistically significant, it actually means something. It's not arbitrary. So when I say something's different, you say something's different, we could mean different things. But when we say statistically significant, no, those mean the same thing. And what does it mean? Well, it means that given a certain level of confidence, and this one it's 95, 95%, um, that I can say something is stati statistically significant with 95% confidence. That's the idea. So your task for question eight is to brush up a little bit on what it means to be considered statistically different and answer are set one and set two far enough apart to be considered different. They, they are. Uh, set one and set one S, are they far enough to be considered statistically different? I, uh, it's not as hard as you think to answer that one, so I won't say it. It's pretty much what you would guess. But yeah, that also cite the, um, the resources that you were using. And I just showed you an, e an easy one to get to. You don't have to use this one. I don't have really any strong opinion on it. Um, I'm satisfied with it because it brings up the idea of a p-value. Again, this isn't a stats class, so um, I'm pretty sure you don't have to be super specific. In fact, I'm going to be the one grading it, so no, you don't have to be super specific. But if it doesn't mention a p-value in the link or whatever, uh, no. Okay, so any questions on the lab? The homework is pretty straightforward. You are going to be doing the same thing we just did with a much smaller data set. You're going to be producing a histogram of these two series, just like we did here. Uh, the bin choice is up to you, but I need to be able to visually see that it's a good choice. How do, what's a good choice? What's a bad choice? Two bins is not a good choice for this, and you can see why. I just need to make a histogram. Determine enough evidence if there is a difference in the mean between the two brands. 
Now you will, uh, how do we know if they're, if they're different enough? Well, that's the exact question that was asked here. So any, whatever you look up to figure out question eight, that's what you'll uh, need to be able to answer this. And to make things easier, here's the skeleton for what you need to do. So any questions on anything, really? You can ask whatever you want. One, I might not answer it. Two, I might not be qualified to answer stuff if it's not about the lab. Anything at all. Okay, well, um, yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, I'll have office hours tomorrow, and there's the tutoring thing tomorrow at 5, so... I'll be around for that. Other than that, everyone have a nice afternoon, evening. Watch out for tornadoes.